Hello, LLA, and welcome to Pacific Pulse. I'm Clement Paligaru. Coming up, feasting on fruit for a healthier future in Tonga. A Papua New Guinean artist finds inspiration in New Zealand. And a taste of Fiji at the Pacific's biggest produce market. Tonga has one of the highest rates of obesity anywhere in the world. It's officially an epidemic, with around 60% of the nation's adults classed as obese. A new project is working on those waistlines, with a local approach to healthier eating, starting with the Pacific's abundance of tropical fruit. At Atelo Primary School in Nukualofa, they're learning about healthy eating. The youth and the, especially the children here in Tonga now, they, they don't like the, our local food. Eh? Their taste is uh, like uh, noodles and lollies. Like many parts of the Pacific, Western influence has changed local tastes. Traditional diets are being substituted for imported foods that are high in fat and sugar. The lack of appetite for fresh fruit in Tonga means very little is grown locally for sale. The fruits are not regarded as a daily part of the meal except when it is available. So the aim is to make the availability of fruits in the daily diets of the family. This is all citrus. Dr. Viliamu Manu is in charge of Tonga's Tropical uh, Fruit Project, run by the Ministry of Agriculture, Food, Forests and Fisheries. It aims to fill up Tonga's fruit bowls with locally grown produce, improving the nation's health without having to buy expensive imported fruit. Annually we are importing a lot of fruits, which is very strange because we have a climate for all types of fruits. At this nursery at Vaini on Tonga's main island of Tongatapu, over 30 varieties of fruit trees have been planted, from seeds brought in mostly from tropical Queensland in Australia. So our main um, operation in here is to produce, propagate a lot of seedlings for distribution. I think the main challenges for this program is to getting the people to grow it. And because it will take about at least five years before it will start uh, fruiting, that's the crucial part, is how to motivate the farmers to maintain their plots and their fruit trees until such time it will give them uh, a return of their investment. The project has been funded for five years, and if the Atelier Primary School's proactive approach is any indication, there will be plenty of willing mouths and stomachs by the time it bears fruit. Healthy food in Tonga is one of our major chapters here in Tonga, and we teach it from class one up to class six. That's my role to encourage my children to change their taste to have their local food. It's a long way from Port Moresby to cosmopolitan Auckland. But for Papua New Guinean artist Jeffrey Figa, the move to New Zealand is creatively stimulating and a chance to add a Melanesian flavour to Auckland's very Polynesian art scene. The hustle and bustle of Auckland could overwhelm a first-time visitor. But it's a chance of a lifetime for Papua New Guinea artist Jeffrey Figa who's won a six-week residency in New Zealand. It's an opportunity for me to extend my horizons, to extend my thoughts, the way I think of the world. And that as an artist is, is important if you want, if you want to be seen in, in a global context. The residency is hosted by the Tautai Contemporary Pacific Arts Trust and the Pacific Cooperation Foundation. It aims to allow a Pacific artist immersion in Auckland's art scene. To enable them to network and to see other artists work, um, to have time to talk to them about art um, and to look at, obviously, to look at galleries. This is a gallery just not too far from where I'm staying. One of your hangouts. <laughs> well, this is a work by Lucas Jones. 
and it's the kind of work that you know I've, I haven't come across. Like people just sketch what's on their mind, and it, it's a response to something. It's an immediate response. So describe what's the difference then between what you see here and uh, what's at home. Work here is expressive. There's expressive freedom. There's text in, in the artwork, in the paintings. Um, it's written text. There's poetry. Back at home, where you know everything's almost contrived. Like we work into pattern and you know strict control of the brush. So that comes across in the naive style and, and in all of us, I guess, is that um, idea of making things look neat and perfect. But Jeffrey doesn't paint for Papua New Guinea's mass market, focusing on portraiture instead. And the great thing is it's in Papua New Guinea, this hasn't been done before, it hasn't been explored. Portraits of ordinary people, you know, have been my main subjects, and that hasn't been done of, of Melanesian people. I always mix a lot of colors to achieve skin tone. It's a burnt sienna and it's a, it's a cool blue that I mix together to achieve uh, the Melanesian skin. I think we've been very fortunate with Jeffrey being the first artist in residence. That he's very talented, uh, has a wide range of skills, and his work could go in any direction, really. Well, this work is basically a response to my time here. It's been fast, furious, combustion, just fire, like, because it's been instant. It's been a lot of information, a lot of stimulus, has, you know, it's gone through me. And so I felt I, you know, I'd use bright colors and, and just sort of just put it out there on the canvas. Living here, staying here, just on the, the outskirts of the city centre and having a great view, um, I've incorporated the tower and a bit of the, the colour of the city lights. People with their arms stretched, it's about freedom of expression. And being here, having people understand and appreciate me as an artist has been, you know, uh, a revelation. It's been amazing. It's been like the chains have been broken. But Papua New Guinea remains his main inspiration. That's something that every Papua New Guinean, when they leave home, carries with them, is that history, that, that belonging, the connection to their culture. Is it hard being away from home? <laughs> yes, but fortunately it's not for too long. He left behind his wife and three-year-old son. Yeah, both Axel and I miss him very much. Axel's following on his um, dad's footsteps. He's always uh, really wanting to paint with his dad. Ever since he could uh, hold uh, a pen or a pencil, he's, he's been going for it. We've also worked together on a few pieces. He's free, he's carefree, he just scribbles around the page and gives me you know, really good compositions that I sometimes work on. While this separation may be painful, it's important for the whole family. I hope for the better for him and for us. For our future, we um, hope that whatever he's done down there can bring a much and brighter future for us. It feels great because um, everyone wants to know about Papua New Guinea and Papua New Guinean art. Some people have heard about the traditional culture, but they haven't quite heard about the contemporary scene that's going on at home with the artists. They're more likely to have heard of Jeffrey Figa now, but what future for Axel Figa? I should say he's a little artist now. <laughs> It'd be great, like, um, but I, you know I don't want to put pressure on the little guy. Thanks for watching Pacific Pulse. We leave you with more healthy food from what's probably the largest produce market in the Pacific. The Suva market sells everything from root crops to spices to seafood. A real taste of multicultural Fiji. Enjoy! <music>